You're listening to Life Repurposed with Michelle Rayburn, where you'll find uplifting and practical advice for everyday living, creative inspiration for do-it-yourself projects, and recommendations for books and resources that will encourage you to embrace your life repurposed. I'm your host, Michelle Rayburn. Hey there, it's time for another episode of Life Repurposed, and I'm so glad that you've joined me today. If you followed along over the last year, you know that it's been one year and a little bit longer than that, maybe since I started doing this podcast. And it's been really fun to connect with you twice a month with a new episode, different guests, different resources, lots of things that I hope have uh, just had you feel like you had a friend that came alongside of you and met with you in your everyday life. If this is your first time listening, thank you so much for joining us. You'll find that I like to give practical tips. I like to talk about about everyday life and how difficult circumstances have been turned into something that has grown us and stretched us and brought glory to God in some way. And then I also like to share with you some sort of practical resource so that there's a book or a website or an article or a tip or a tool or something like that that I like to share with you. So for this episode, it is airing a week before Thanksgiving, and I thought about talking about gratitude, but I think that's everywhere, and I know that we need to be thankful, so um, I'm not saying that that's not important, but I was trying to decide what to talk about. I really struggled with it because it's like, well, what do people want to hear? And please send me your suggestions if you have an idea. Um, because I love to know what you want to hear. So the other thing is I've been tired, I've been fighting a cold, and um, I feel like I'm going to sneeze all the time. And so that's been something that, um, you know, that feeling just kind of bugs you after a while. And if you're watching on video, you can probably tell that my nose is a little bit red from that. And then I've also been tired because we've been having snow, like more snow than we normally get in the fall. Um, So anyway, it's starting to sound really gloomy. I know as I'm talking here, that isn't the point of this show, but I just want you to know that in everyday life, I'm not always happy. I'm not always chipper. I'm not always full of energy. And there are some times when I wish I could just crawl under the covers and have someone read me a bedtime story. You remember what that was like when you were a kid, when someone would tuck you in? And if you didn't have that, I'm really sorry that you didn't have that in your childhood because um, those are some fun memories that um, I've had with my own childhood. And if you didn't have that in yours, I hope that with your own children, that this is a tradition that you can start. So I remember my mom reading to us when I was a kid. She read all kinds of books to us. And so, yeah, there are times when as an adult, when life is hard and I'm frustrated and I'm sad and there's just stuff going on that I wish somebody would just read me a bedtime story. So that got me thinking, why not read a bedtime story to my listeners. Stay with me here because there is going to be a point to this. So I wrote a book called Jewel a couple of years ago and I wrote it more for sharing with young girls when I'm speaking to a group of women. There are sometimes young girls in the audience, maybe it's a mother-daughter event or something like that. And so I wanted to have something where I could relate to them And I could have a little message just for them. And so I ended up publishing it last year in the form of a children's book. But I've realized when I look at the message, it isn't just for girls. In fact, I dedicated the book to all the women and girls out there who need to hear this message because there are some of us who have not embraced the idea that God loves us very much, that we are of value, that we have a place in this world and that it wasn't a mistake that we were born. And I meet women all the time who need to hear this message. If you're riding in your car, if you're listening along or you're watching on video right now, uh, this message is for you. And if your kids are listening in, this is one episode where why not have them listen in because I'm going to tell you a story. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read to you from my book, Jewel. A, pre- a parable about living as a precious treasure. And if you're actually watching along on YouTube or on Facebook video, I will try to hold up the stories and do a good job of reading the book. But for the rest of you, listen along and see if somewhere in here you find yourself in Jewel's story. So the book begins with a dedication. 
This book is dedicated to every girl and every woman who has ever needed to hear how much she is valued and loved. Those of you who are just listening along on audio are actually going to hear real pages turning in the background here. <laughs> okay, so every good story starts with Once upon a time, there was a young maiden named Jewel who lived in an ordinary little village in a green grassy valley. If you hear a pause, it's just me showing a quick picture. She lived with her granny and papa. Except for Jewel, granny and papa had no one else to take care of them. They loved her so much. Every morning she woke up as the sun was barely peeking over the hills and plodded out to feed the chickens and the goats and milk the cow. She brought the eggs into the cottage for breakfast. Inside, she skimmed the cream from the top of the milk and made it into butter. Next, Jewel added coal to the black stove in the corner of the kitchen and cooked hot cakes in the frying pan for breakfast. Jewel tried hard to be a good girl. She helped Granny wash the laundry and scrub the floors, and she helped Papa take care of his roses. Sometimes he let her cut one to put in her room. The petals reminded her of Granny's soft cheeks. Granny and Papa liked to nap after they ate their bread and cheese for lunch. When they were napping, Jewel went on adventures. Her favorite adventure was exploring the path through Mr. Farmer's fields. He never minded. From the top of Mr. Farmer's hill where the sheep grazed, she could see another path that led far away over more green hills with more dirt paths. She could see a, the stone walls of a vast castle with a white flag waving at the top. The narrowest road led straight to the castle. She often dreamed of living in the castle instead of her village, but alas, she thought her dream could never come true, for Jewel was a peasant. Peasants didn't live in castles. They lived in shabby cottages with shabby curtains and shabby doors. They wore tattered dresses with tattered shoes and tattered stockings. Princesses in castles couldn't be shabby or tattered, or so she thought. One day the king's son, the prince, came to the village. He stayed in one of the cottages for a time and told the villagers wonderful stories of the king. The king was a loving father who was making a new place for the villagers to live. He loved them more than they could understand. How could it be, the villagers asked. You make us hope for something we will never have. Go away. We will work to make our cottages better by ourselves. Some of the villagers were so angry that they wanted to harm the prince. They rejected his promises of a happy life in a happy place with the king. He is a liar, they said, and they plotted to kill him. One morning, when Jewel was helping make the oatmeal for breakfast, a messenger arrived with a letter from the king. The letter invited Jewel to become an adopted daughter of the king. My son will take care of paying for everything, the letter read. It will cost you nothing, but you must accept this gift to receive it. Would Jewel put her trust in the king and believe the promise? Would she live in the castle someday? The king's letter contained all of the instructions Jewel needed. He told her she must remain in the village until he came for her and that she would have his promise to help her through the hardships to come. The letter said Granny and Papa would be able to go to the castle, too, if they trusted the king's promise. Dearest daughter, my princess, he wrote, I love you and I want the best for you. And so it went. I will believe the king's promise, said Jewel. I want to be his adopted daughter. The king gave Jewel a beautiful necklace that set her apart as his daughter. On the necklace was one pearl. This was the Pearl of Wisdom. The letter assured her that along the way, as hard times and happy times would come, she would receive other pearls. Someday, when the necklace was complete, the king would send his son back for her on a white horse, and he would carry her away to his castle forever. He promised that in his kingdom there were streets made of gold, and his majesty glittered like diamonds. And so Jewel treasured each pearl as it came, love, joy, and peace. Patience, kindness, and goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. She received the pearls of righteousness and obedience. She treasured her pearls of hope, comfort, and victory over darkness. Hence, Jewel lived joyfully ever after until the day the king came for her.
the end. Stay tuned as I give you some reflections about why I wrote this story. So I hope you enjoyed your bedtime story. If you were driving the car, I hope you're not sleeping right now. Uh, I wanted to share a little bit of my heart in why I wrote that story and um, a little bit more about what it means. So um, there are times in life when I look at the hardships and the frustrations and the things that I go through and I think this shouldn't be part of life. And I've realized over time and just studying God's word that it is part of life, that hardships are part of being here and difficulties are part of being here and that we have a promise that we can focus on. And that promise came directly from God's word that he has a place for us when we believe in him. And I wrote this as a parable so that it's a story that we could easily understand in a picture form, a word picture of how much God loves us, and um, how he sacrificed so that we could have hope of a place after we leave this earth. And so, um, like all fairy tales, I wanted to make sure we had a prince and a princess and a king and a cottage and a village and all those little things. But really, my heart today is for you, and I want you to understand the message that God does love you, and that it wasn't a mistake that you were put in the circumstances that you're in, even if they are not fair, even if they are difficult, even if you're waiting and waiting to see some hope in the middle of that. And so this is your encouragement today that someone loves you, God loves you, I care about you, and um, I just want that to be our message of hope. And so whether you are a little girl or a big girl, we are all girls at heart and just needing to hear that message. So um, stay tuned as I tell you just a little bit more about the book, and then we'll be wrapping up this episode. So our resource today, of course, is Jewel, a parable about living as a precious treasure. This is the book that I just read you. You got the whole book in one episode. And um, I don't want to sound salesy or anything today. I just want um, you to know that this book is available on Amazon. You can go to michellerayburn.com slash 23 and get the show notes for this episode or just michellerayburn.com and you'll see I have links to books there. But one of the things I want you to know is that in the back of the book, there are discussion questions for families. So if this is something that you would like to read with kids, it really is intended for you to read and discuss. So I have questions such as, um, how do you think Jewel got her name? Who do you think the pr prince represents in the story? Um, it talks about Jewel trying to be a good girl and talks about why, uh, there's a question asking, why do you think the king didn't require her to be good in order to receive his gift? And this is something too that um, for us, it's important for us to know that it isn't what we achieve. It isn't how good we are that makes us worthy in God's sight. Our worth comes because he created us with his his image built into us. And so you have worth because you are created in the image of God. And even though we do things that would um, disappoint our human parents and we think, oh, God must want me gone. That is not true. He is a loving father who is not looking at you because of what you do, but because of how much he loves you. And so this story is intended for that discussion to take place with um the young people in your life who need to hear it. But I find that I need to hear that as a reminder too. Um, so there are lots of questions there. There's even a Bible passage that you can look up and talk about uh, the, the pearls that Jewel received, love, joy, peace, patience. You might recognize those as the fruit of the Spirit. So that is available as a resource, um, something that maybe you want to think about for Christmas gift giving. But ultimately, my goal today was not to try to sell you a book, but really to try to give you some truth and just tell you that you are loved. And so I hope that's the message you take away today. Go about your day joyfully ever after, even if happily ever after is not your reality. I hope you still find joy in the moments of today. Thank you for joining me. I will see you again in a couple of weeks. You've been listening to Life Repurposed with Michelle Rayburn. 
Check out tips, resources, and inspiration at michellerayburn.com.